Hey guys, it's Rumble Man coming today from Florida, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started integrating the Line 6 HX Stomp into your pedal board. <laughs> So if you haven't been here before, welcome to the Rumblin' Man channel. Uh, and if you have been here before, welcome back. If you've been following my videos lately, then you know that I've been doing a lot of videos reviewing a lot of different guitar and bass related products. And one thing I've really been using quite a bit lately is the HX Stomp by Line 6. Um, there was a time when having one of these in my possession was basically a dream, but through my church this, uh, this happened. So, very cool unit. Um, I've used it as an interface in many of my videos, and though the videos I do here on the Rumblin' Man channel are mostly gear and equipment reviews, uh, I'm kind of getting into doing some tutorials because I know that there's certain situations in which you need more information and you can't always find the exact information you're looking for. But everything here on the Rumblin' Man channel uh, is friendly and it's all uh, equipment related so make sure you subscribe for more videos like this one when I first started learning to use the HX stomp and integrating it with my pedal board there were a number of things that I didn't know and that I couldn't really find a good explanation on how to do so in this new series of videos that are tutorials about the HX stomp my goal is to help you get up started with it uh, without having to go to some of the trouble I did which was going into online forums and, and trying things and and seeing if it all worked out, which is always good stuff, but there is a learning curve uh, with this technology. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, it really is a blessing. And I don't have everything figured out yet, but I have figured out at least some things about it. And so I wanna go on and impart that knowledge uh, to you. So I had a hard time figuring out, okay, what's the best way to integrate um, the Line 6 HX Stomp with my pedal board? I had a hard time figuring out, do I just plug straight in for my board? I mean, what do I do? And I kind of learned that there is a trick to it that if you're using this uh, in conjunction with a pedal board uh, that makes the whole thing work a lot better and sound uh, absolutely great. Do you need an HX stomp? Well, here's the question. Um, are you running through a live amp or are you running direct into a sound system? Because if you're playing electric guitar and you're running direct into a sound system, you need to have something that simulates an amplifier uh, or an amp cabinet. An electric guitar with no kind of amplification whatsoever is completely ineffective. You have to have something to emulate an amp uh, when you're playing electric guitar. And there's a couple you know, really high-end things out there. There are some low-end things out there. And then there's something that is a really great device that is affordable, and that is the Stomp. Because what this is ultimately meant for uh, is the Line 6 Helix's uh, technology for amp cab simulation and amplifier modeling. Uh, for instance, a great situation in which this works out is at my church, we've gone digital, digital soundboard, and we have eliminated stage noise by going to in-ear monitors and getting rid of all the amps on the stage. Even our drum kit is an electronic Roland V drum kit. So our stage noise is very minimal, and that works really great in a kind of smaller enclosed setting when you don't have as much sound bouncing around and the sound technicians can control the audio a little bit better without having to deal with live stage amps and you know all the different levels of volume coming from the stage. When you're gonna simulate uh, guitar amplifiers, amp head, amp cab, combo, whatever you want to do. When you're going to simulate them, you want to use the best amp modeling technology you can because at the end of the day, especially in the church world, it's all about having a positive impact and being effective uh, in your ultimate goal and mission uh, by using the best ingredients that you possibly can in everything you do. And this is an excellent ingredient. <laughs> Thank you. 
when I play electric guitar at my church, uh, I run direct, but here's what I have noticed. The Stompin' itself, though it does have uh, built-in Helix effects, there's only a limited amount of effects you can use at one time. So most people who use the Stomp, unless you're doing a real minimalist um, electric rig or playing bass, most people who use the HX Stomp are going to use it as part of their pedal board. And my pedal board, which you already saw in another clip, in the first place is fairly minimal, but it's got all the bases covered that you need, and it's kind of a growing process and in a, in a phase of growth for sure. My ideal setup, I would love to have like a Helix floorboard, like the whole thing, but to me that's like totally out of my potential realm of affordability. Uh, this, however, you know, running new around $600, is something to where that's still a good chunk of change, uh, but it is something that you could potentially afford, potentially get your hands on. So it's like if you have a pedal board and you got pedals going and you need good amp simulation with a couple extra effects, then the HX stop is gonna work out great for you. But yeah, like I was saying a minute ago, there are some things that I wish uh, had been clear when getting started so that I could have gotten onto uh, excellent tone creation a little faster. And one of those things was the best way uh, to use this with pedals, and that's going to be to use the effects loop. So check this out. I'll go into the software with HX Edit uh, and show you what I mean in detail in just a moment. So here on the back, there's a lot of different uh, switches and controls, obviously a USB jack, I wish there was an XLR, several quarter inch ins and outs, your ultimate uh, power plug and all that stuff. But check this out. So the actual input, which if you're running mono, which this video we're doing all mono, nothing's going to be really stereo in this video. Um, if you're running a guitar input straight into the stomp unit, it's best to use the left or mono uh, straight up instrument input right here. And at first, I was running my pedals into that too, until I found that there was a better way to do so. And on the side, what we have is we have a stereo effect sin, and then we have a return and aux in. And this is what we're going to use for our effects loop. So I'll show you how to set it up in just a moment. But ideally, so my guitar is going to go into this hole, and it's going to go through you know, no effects pedals, just whatever I want to use, like a volume pedal, tuner, maybe an EQ, and then it's going to go straight into the regular input. Now, where my other pedals come into play, like my drive pedal, chorus, uh, things of that nature, what, you know, I can pick, using the software, I can pick where I want those um, in the lineup of all my pedals and effects digitally. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go out uh, of the HX Stomp using the Stereo Send, I'm going to go into my pedals with that, through my pedals, and then I'm going to come back into the stomp using the left uh, mono jack right here uh, for the return. And what that's going to do is you've still got your pedals coming into uh, the stomp itself, but you can digitally using software pick where you want them and you can ensure a really stellar sound. So here's what you need to do uh, to proceed with my method of doing this. Obviously you need the stomp. You need the pedals you're going to use, you need patch cables, power source, and then if you've got a computer, go on and download the program HX Edit, which you can get on Line 6's website. I'll link that up in the description as well. And then uh, open up HX Edit, and you can do exactly what I'm about to show you to do. So here, let's do this thing. Let's go on over to a screen view on my computer, and I'll show you how to set this up uh, where you can use it just as I just now mentioned. All right, so here we are uh, in HX Edit, and I am sharing my screen with you. Uh, so as you see, we have empty blocks. Uh, so here's the thing. The, the blocks, what you hear referred to as blocks, are going to be up here where the main line from your guitar input to your ultimate main output is. There are blocks in between there where you can have your amp, your effects loop um, per patch, you only get six blocks. All right, so here we are, you know, with our basic roadmap, and it's like, okay, well, Rumbling Man, how do I go, you know, from sitting right here to uh, to looping my effects in uh, to this thing for uh, for ideal amp simulation? So I'm going to kind of show you my method of setting it up. Uh, but as far as actual compression goes, we're going to go to dynamics, and I'm going to go with the deluxe compressor for our first block. Okay, so. This is just my guitar into the dynamic compressor. That's all you're hearing. All 
All right? So usually what I'm going to do is, so you know, I'm going to run my guitar through my volume pedal and tuner uh, and my EQ pedal, and then I'm going to run it straight into the HX stop as an input, and then I've got my other pedals uh, in through the effects loop, basically. So what I'm going to do right here is the next thing I want after my guitar signal is going to be, for me, the other pedals I'm using. So I got another block here and I'm going to go down here to send and return. All right. So you're going to go to FX loop L for left and select that. All right. So now there's my guitar. And then if I'm going to turn on the pedal that I have plugged up uh, while I'm making this demo right now, which is the Choya, which is by uh, LPD. All right. So now you can hear uh, the pedals because they're looped in. So right now I've got a dynamic compressor on just my guitar and then I've got my pedals next and then I've got these blocks uh, for whatever I want after that. Now there's different settings that you can uh, tailor your pedal sound with um, or the general FX loop. Also this toggle switch right here will turn it on or off depending on whether you're using it or not. You can also toggle it on or off up here as you can for every block. So for me, what I'm usually going to do next is this. It's like, okay, now I got my pedals integrated. Um, you know, I've got a basic compressor on here. So in this case, I am usually going to go on and develop an amp cab. All right, so right now I'm not trying to create a great patch. I'm just trying to show you, for instance. So with these blocks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the amp simulation, which is ultimately the whole point of the stomp. And then I'm also going to have... Um, a couple effects in here that I feel are necessary that I don't have on my board, uh, which I recommend doing. So honestly, for me, that's going to be I don't have reverb or delay on my board. So I'm going to use reverb and delay right here in the stomp. But yeah, one of these needs to be your amp cab. So I'm going to go to this block right here, per se, and I'm going to go to amp and cab. And then we have all these different options. Mail order twin is kind of a fender twin, so now it's kind of like I'm running through one of those. All right, so let's go on and hear uh, what that sounds like. Got the effects loop, so let me turn on the uh, LPD Choya real quick. All right. So essentially what we have going on now is uh, we have a guitar through a pedal into an amp. And that right there and the simplicity of that and its compact size for your, for your pedal board is the essence of what uh, to me HX Stop is meant for. It's going to give you an amplifier sound and the flexibility to throw in some effects as well. Uh, right now to continue uh, the idea for demo sake is I'm going to show you how I've been setting up uh, my pedal board uh, with the HX Stomp uh, in terms of this uh, graphic example here. So let's go over to my actually my original patch. There it is, Sky City RM for Rumbling Man. So this is Sky City, which is my uh, original patch, and it's a great patch if you like it and if you like the sound. You can actually uh, go to a link in the description of this video. Uh, where you could download this for yourself. I've got it for absolutely dirt cheap and you can get started using the sound that I've been using uh, in church for worship lately. So as you can see I'm using these six blocks pretty wisely. First thing I've got is dynamic deluxe compressor. The next thing I've got is I've got uh, the effects loop which is going to be all the pedals on my board with the exception of the volume pedal the tuner and the EQ, which I use those just with the guitar input itself. Uh, next, I've got a distortion. Um, because I have drive on my pedal board, I'm not using this distortion right now, but I have it in this patch in case I need it. For instance, I would turn it on like this. Kind of uh, essentially, you know, super overdrive uh, by Boss. It's that kind of uh, sound very very similar to that but I'm keeping that off at the moment then amp and cab simulator uh, I'm actually going with kind of a matchless uh, amp which I find works really nicely with the Telecaster I've got the drive cranked a little bit right now to three 
Uh, and the reason I have it there is so that I can have some overdrive sounds without even turning on a pedal. And that I can also strum a little lighter and it's not very driven. If you've got the drives that you want to use, if you've already got those on your pedal board, then what I would do is I would, I would keep the drive down and maximize gain in other ways. But I've just got it a little bit up for, uh, for my standard taste right now, but you can adjust the drive however you want. And then what I've got after that is I've got delay. And I've got a pretty simple delay, uh, dotted eighth, that I really like. Okay. And then I've got reverb, and essentially what I have going on is um, I have my reverb set up in a way to where the reverb is on at all times, but you can get kind of a glitzy, um, heavy mix reverb just by just with the touch of this pedal here. Beautiful. So for worship music, you know, which I play weekly. Um, and produce as well. That's one of the sounds you gotta have. Then you put, you know, the delay and the reverb on, it's pretty ambient. Not super ambient, but ambient enough. So that's how I have it set up uh, right now. And you can have uh, this exact patch um, for dirt cheap. Uh, there's a link in the description, but that's kind of how uh, you want to do your setup uh, within HX Edit itself. If you want to bring your pedals in using effects loop and incorporate them, you know, in a line, just like if the whole thing were a pedal board and an amplifier, or with limited or unlimited, <laughs> you know, options for wiring. So obviously there are more advanced ways to get into it even deeper. You know, if you've got a lot of patch cables or whatever. I mean, there's a million different things you can do, but for me. I find that this is a simple way to get great sounds um, using pedals and some of the stomps uh, natural features and I find that it's just something I wish I had known how to do when I first started because I had to ask groups online and watch videos and experiment and figure it out for myself so that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video so that you could already know exactly how to get it going so pretty cool that's my internal setup there but obviously you want to see more about how it sounds and how I've got it set up with my pedal board so let me go on and hook up. I'm going to plug up my pedal board, uh, get the cameras rolling, and show you exactly how I've been using this uh, the past couple Sundays for worship uh, and exactly how it's all working together and how it sounds. All right, so now we're all plugged up with my uh, current pedal board. Even though as I've been putting this uh, pedal board together, it's like phase 11 by now. Uh, we'll go on and call this phase one for uh, YouTube purposes because this is the first that I filmed uh, this configuration of my pedal board. So let me get the cord off the volume pedal there. Really cool. So same basic clean tone you heard a little while ago with my telly here. Sky City is a really good patch for Telecasters, uh, but I currently am going into uh, the Boss VF50 volume pedal with this monster cable from the Telecaster. Uh, from there, the uh, Boss volume pedal is going into this Rowan tuner, which I find to be a, a great little uh, mini tuner. I mean, it's got its quirks and its issues uh, and, and a couple things that I'm not crazy about about it, uh, but it does the job and I do like it. And then from there, I'm going into the uh, Boss GE7 uh, Equalizer 7 Band EQ pedal. Now, this isn't the case for long because there will be a new addition to this board soon and that's what another one of my upcoming videos will be about but um, right now I'm using the equalizer as a boost so I've got the main gain turned up a little bit and I've got the mids boosted a little bit and so that just uh... um, so from there I'm just going straight into the stomp using the uh, the input jack for instrument because really those are all clean things that aren't affecting the sound in any way other than volume and equalization. So from there, you know, we're in the stomp 
And then the next, you know, the next block I have after a compressor, I do have a compressor on the guitar in there. And then the next block I have from there is going to be the effects loop. And so that's where I go out and I go into this Behringer uh, Vintage Tube Overdrive TO800. And that is the drive I've been using. And it's really cool. You can check out my review uh, of this pedal on YouTube as well. Um, it's kind of a simulation of the Ibanez Tube Screamer. So check it out. Some people might say that's a little heavy for modern praise and worship music, but quite honestly, you know, even though I'm, I'm totally into the modern sound, I've never been one to uh, to abandon my roots of just rock and guitar playing. You know, I, I love good overdrive. All right, so then I'm going out of that pedal into the Boss Super Chorus. And then from the Super Chorus, I'm going back in uh, to the effects uh, loop return. Uh, left for mono right there on the stop. And then from there we go into the stop where I've got the uh, amp simulation and from the amp simulation we have reverb and delay. Um, so basically here's, I mean you can hear the reverb that's there all the time. And then here's the mix. So this chorus and this beautiful mix uh, of reverb together uh, sound really nice. some delay things get real ambient not overly ambient but pretty ambient So really cool. So between all those sounds, I get what I need for worship. And then for for leads, I mean, as far as rockin' sounds goes, I mean, I've got just the unaided, you know, and then I throw in some overdrive. But for leads, I might need a little more gain, so then that's when I'll boost it with the equalizer like this. So, and as of this past Sunday morning, all that works for me really well. And then, of course, I'm never one to completely abandon the typical uh, overdriven 80s rock sound with chorus. So that's how I've been running uh, my guitar the past couple weeks. Sky City uh, patch for by Rumblin' Man for uh, HX Stomp. And then I've got my drive, my chorus, my equalizer, tuner, volume pedal, uh, then reverb and delay in the unit itself along with some compression. And the whole point is this, is that in a live setting, you know, when you need amp simulation, then you have a number of options. But when it comes to modern options, that are on the cutting edge um, of modern amp modeling technology. Um, the Line 6 HX Stomp is way up there in terms of amp cab uh, simulation. So if you want something that's compact, uh, sound, has the great amp sounds of the Line 6 Helix, yet it can fit on your pedal board uh, with the pedals you want to use, uh, this is great. So uh, I'll probably make another video and talk about the things I like most about the HX Stomp and the things about it that uh, I don't care for and wish were different, but quite honestly, this is a really cool option for getting into, uh, you know, the world of Helix and great amp modeling technology, uh, especially when you take into consideration that, you know, it runs around $600, uh, but very cool. Now, as you can see on my pedal board, uh, there are a couple spaces open where more pedals can be added. And one of my next uh, reviews here on the channel will be about that about what I'm planning to put in one of those uh, blocks. So 
Uh, and so, yeah, some of this will be repurposed. So this is phase one, as YouTube will know it. And then I'm really looking forward to phase two and, and all the other phases. And this is a compact board. Um, the board all this is sitting on is actually a Donner board that I got off Amazon at a very affordable rate. Uh, so if you take out uh, or if you check out the uh, links in the description, I'll go on and put links to all these products where you can check them out for yourself. The tuner, uh, the drive, and the board are all very affordable uh, products. And really, um, none of these things are ridiculously priced. So. <laughs> So I'm going to keep working on it and keep adding stuff I love, but I'm happy with, uh, with the sounds I'm getting. So that should answer the question as to how to integrate the HX Stomp uh, with your pedal board. Uh, what else do you want to know about using the HX Stomp? I'd love to hear in the comments of this video um, other things that you would like to see me address in future videos, uh, how I can maybe help you with certain things and using this absolutely wonderful pedal. Not only is it great for guitar, it's great for bass as well. And there's a link up there uh, where you can check out uh, a video I made called My Favorite Pedal for Bass Guitar? Question mark. And uh, it's really cool uh, for either one. Great modeling and also it's great for acoustic and that's something I'll be addressing uh, probably in another video at some point is uh, in our first service at my church, which is a little quieter and lower key, I can run my acoustic through my usual setup using an acoustic patch in this. And then for second service, you know, which is more modern and mainstream and we plug up and we rock for the Lord hardcore, uh, that's when I'm going to plug up my electric guitar and use my pedals. So really cool deal. As always, God bless you guys. And I thank you so much for checking out my video today, for clicking on my link or thumbnail. It means the world. If you enjoyed this video today, go on and give me a thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, as well as all kinds of gear reviews for uh, guitar and bass stuff, go on and subscribe to the Rumblin' Man channel. Uh, you can also keep up with me on social media as I post a lot of pictures on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, but ultimately, it all points right back here uh, to YouTube where the Rumblin' Man channel, uh, I'm always going to try to steer you in the right direction. If you're passionate about the calls and really like what I'm doing, uh, I do have crowdfunding websites uh, such as Patreon and PayPal uh, set up for people to help support the channel. I, I've still yet to really get it to do anything more than sustain itself, but there's upgrades that I need to make and things that I need to do on my end to be able to bring you the best content I can as frequently as I can. But I don't exactly have the budget to make it all happen perfectly yet. So if you'd be interested in being one of my financial donors, please head over to Patreon or PayPal for a one-time donation and, uh, and feel free to do so. However, uh, there is never any pressure to do that and certainly don't feel obligated uh, because number one, I just want you to be blessed by the content. Uh, that option is simply there for people uh, who can and who would like to. If you're watching on a YouTube browser, you can see a couple thumbnails around me right now uh, of videos of other things related to maybe the HX Stomp or other products that I've found really cool and helpful for the things I do uh, with music. And you can click on those and check those out uh, because I think that somewhere in there, there's going to be another great video for you. So until the next one, take care.